We're back, not canceled yet. Season premiere of Local Focus. I'm your host, Sebastian Noel. And as we embark here on, I think, our fifth season, uh, we're in football season and uh, it's, it's hot and heavy. A lot of games across ProView Networks, of course. Uh, any APS facility, it's on Game Vision, gamevision.io. Uh, any non APS facility, you can check that out on the NFHS network. Uh, and of course, the My 50 Game of the Week on Friday, which I'm happy to bring you every Friday with uh, my new broadcast partner, John Chavis. And, uh, but the best way to get to all that is just go to ProViewNetworks.com, check out the weekly schedule, and just click from there. Uh, very excited to have my guest this week. Uh, one of the teams that I've been talking about a lot, I got a little glimpse last year of these young phenoms. And I said, this is going to be a team to watch. So this year, kind of, they are officially my sleeper team. That's the St. Pius Sartans, and I'm with their stud running back, Herschel Alloway Jr. Welcome to the program, man. Thank you, thank you. First of all, what a week one. 12 carries, 262 yards, four touchdowns against a 6A opponent in West Mesa. Talk about that. Going into the game plan, going into the week, we had a great game plan. And I felt like I was very comfortable with it. Coaches installed it very well all week, harped it. Just work hard, work hard, work hard, and it paid off well this week. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the plan was to give you the ball, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and you broke off some big ones. Uh, so talk about that. What did you see on some of those big ones? So as we watched in the film, I noticed that West Mesa, they're a very aggressive team. I like to play very aggressive, play downhill. So as it went on, I started to look like that, at that cutback lane. So as soon as I seen it open, I tried to hit, put foot in the ground and just go. What um, did you think that that... Did you think they were susceptible to some, to some running plays, some big play? Did you think, did you think you were going to get the big chunks, or did you think, hey, well, I'm just going to have to run it a bunch of times? It ended up being big chunks. Is that what you expected? Mm, I would say to an extent. I have a faith that when I get the ball, I feel like I can score. But with the way my O line blocked very well, I just felt just like hole open, seen it, hit it, go. So that's what Nobody's really talking about you guys this year, right? I mean, you're kind of under the... I mean, I think that's going to yeah. change, but you guys are kind of under the radar, right? The usual suspects at the top of the coaches' polls, but you guys are a young team that, I mean, the sky's the limit, right? So yes, talk, about, talk about one kind of not being talked about. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What do you think? Honestly, it's a little bit of both. I like not being able to talk about it as much because it puts us under as a, almost sort of like just work hard every week, just head down, work hard continue to get better each day yes. and then i mean yeah that's that's the other part of that right you just it's easier to just put your head down yeah. and work when there's no expectations right mm -hmm. but i think you guys probably have some internal expectations yeah. don't you what yes, talk about that a little bit as, as far as internal i'll say so our coaches and still is just get better one percent each day just keep getting better one percent one percent each day can you work hard what going. um i mean and then you guys, I, I don't think people realize you guys are so young at yeah. every position. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Tell our audience just, well, one, how old are you? You're, uh, how old are you? And then the rest of the guys that are starting. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell our audience about that. See, me, I'm 15 myself. Then we go to our wide receivers. We have our young Christian Morales as our slot. He's 14, 15. You have Kale, Curtis outside. They're like 15, 16. You got Zay back there, 16, just for our skill guys, younger. And we got our older guy, Brian Thomas, who's leading us along helping us get better, teaching us the ropes. Then our O-line, too, is also pretty young with a lot of sophomores and juniors. So just together, just the younger, just always learning together, just continue right. to take those steps together and just bring each other along. I want to talk more about that, about just coming up together as a yeah. young group. Take a break. We'll come back with Herschel. We'll talk about that when we come back. Don't sacrifice quality and flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, red and green chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Sweet Rolls. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenprideabq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs are proud supporters of Pro B Sports. We would like to thank the following sponsors for making this broadcast possible. <laughs> is a proud supporter of ProView Networks. 
Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Networks. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. Back with St. Pius' uh, running back, Herschel Holloway Jr. Uh, we were just talking about, you were mentioning to me about coming up together as a young yeah. group, right? So I think that's, you guys are in a very unique position now where you guys are all kind of the same grade level, right? Yeah. So have you guys always been playing together? Talk about that. So as far as always playing together, I've always put together with fellow uh, Curtis Flakes. Curtis, that's my cousin. It's like we've always been playing together. So recently, our first year at Yaffle was, I think, sixth or seventh grade. We played with Christian Morales. He came, and then our last year is when uh, Zay, Kale, and uh, Chase came along with us, and we played that final year together, and we got very close as a friend group. So when the decision came to high school, we all wanted to just stay together and remain together and just grow together. And so you guys are pretty much all sophomores, right? Yeah. So you kind of did the yaffle thing and did mm -hmm. all that? Yeah. What I want to know, as a so how do you already have a goatee as a sophomore? Because I've had seniors <laughs> in here that can't grow facial hair, and you already got that going. Get some strong genetics from my mom's the, side. There strong you genetics go. from my mom's side of the family. Right? There you go. Um, so now you're all – how much did last – Back on this yeah. developing together theme, how much did last year help for you guys to all be out there at the varsity level together already? I think it brought us all closer together just as a family because a lot of times you've seen a lot of us got hurt throughout the year, so we weren't able to out, be out there, but we're out there with each other mentally as far as just telling us what we've seen on the field and just helping coach each other as well, just get going together as a family. Getting and even, even the injuries, how much did some of those injuries, I mean, yeah, you never want to get hurt, right? Yeah. But some of those injuries kind of, I don't want to, I don't know how to phrase this, but yeah. did it kind of get you guys ready for the speed and the power of the varsity game? Like, all right, obviously you personally know, yeah. like, okay, this is serious, right? But did that help you guys all? I feel like it did. It taught us as far as just like, for me, example, like when I got hurt, it kind of was on a play where I probably could have went down a little bit and not took an extra hit. So I feel like it's just teaching experience for all of us. Just learn from it and grow, get better, and take the weight more seriously, which some we've all did get in that weight room, get stronger, bigger, get prepared for this season. I mean, I was going to say, that's got to be the other piece of that, right, is you guys, have, you guys obviously go out on that field and see, okay, there's still a size yeah. difference. Yeah. So how does that motivate you guys in the weight room? It motivates just to get bigger, stronger, to compete with those guys. So that way they could be like, oh, he's not weaker than me, but just get stronger, faster. Just, yeah. But you know what? I mean, you look smaller on TV. Now that yeah. you walk into the <laughs> studio, you're not, you know, you're not as small yeah. as I had thought. So maybe because I'm high up in the press box and yeah. stuff, so you're doing all right in that <laughs> department. Um, but talk about your injury a little bit. I mean, just yeah. talk about the shock of when it happened and then... Yeah. Well, let's start there. So last year it was versus Valley. I remember the exact play. It was a 35. So I broke second level and got to the safety. So I went to try to hit him like a stiff arm. He got stuck on his shoulder. So they both went down. My car bone just went straight into the ground. So at first, I thought it was just like a stinger. So I was like, no, I'm good. And I went back to the huddle, and I couldn't, like, move it. So I just went off, and Coach Flake's like, no, nah, Hurst, you good, you good. Go back out there. I was like, no, nah, Coach, I can't move it. <laughs> and so then I went to the sideline, and the trainer came. And then it was kind of just like, oh, shoot, like, it might be something serious. Right. So I couldn't take my pads off. So they kind of had to color bit in the jersey. And you were having a pretty good game yeah. at that point. Yeah. And so... But if I remember that game, that was a very physical game. I, that, yes. I, I think they, they, they got flagged for a couple of late hits as well. Yeah. And so that was that, that, the physicality of that game. So you get injured in, that, in a very physical game. And then what's the road back like, especially with such a young yeah. – I mean, they, oh, they always say the younger body heals quicker. Did you heal quicker than you thought? Was yes. it kind of on schedule? Yeah. Tell us about so that. So as far as my recovery, I was scheduled at 8 to 10. And I started going to my recovery. They're like, hold on. They pushed down to 6 to 8. So that 6 week came – now it's grants. So all week I had been, like, leading up to that, I had been hitting my physical therapy, all that. So I finally got cleared to play grants. So I did. But as limited carry, like, limited snaps, just kind of, like, work back in. Right. So it's just 
Yeah, so just not as so, much. So, I mean, what did that do kind of take a... Take us through the mind. Well, first the mental part of that. Yeah. What's the mental? I mean, when you go from that injury to knowing you're going to miss an extended period yeah. or at first you thought maybe mm -hmm. the whole season, what's the mental aspect like, especially as a young guy, as an underclassman? What yeah. are you going through mentally at that point? So before that, actually, I'd hurt my ankle leading up into that freshman season. So I really wasn't expecting to all play that much. So when that did happen, it was kind of just like maybe like God really had another plan for me. So it was just like step back, like learn from the game, learn other things that didn't involve playing. So that way when I was able to play, mm -hmm. I was start mentally, so I was able to just get better on that mental side. And so you talked about, like, what are you doing from week to week when yeah. you're out at that point? I mean, mm -hmm. did that kind of help you with maybe watching the game from a different perspective? Talk, Hon talk about Honestly, that. I kind of became like a coach. Right. The joke around was I was Coach Hurst Jr. There you go. So I was going out there coaching the running backs, hoping I was with Zay Carp watching a lot of film with him. We'd be in study hall watching film. I was with the receivers, just teach, showing them things I had seen. So it kind of became like a coaching role that I kind of like. And then, but then, then you know, your, your team takes some L's. Yeah. Some other guys get banged up a little yeah. bit. How hard is that to watch that from the sideline? Yes. Knowing you're not out there with your guys. That, that, that was probably the hardest part, of be, not being out there. But, like, I was able to just tell them, like, I don't understand what you're going through. Like, let's get through this together. We got another year. Let's all just get through this together. Continue. Just know I got you, and we'll bounce back next year. All right. Um, the other nice thing about starting at such a young age on varsity is you kind of have a, you guys have a pretty large window, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, I mean, obviously you don't want to take anything for granted, but these are still growing times, right? Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, that's what I was got to remind ourselves is that we're younger for, compared to these teams. So just every week, like even the West Mesa game, for example, we might have took that as a loss. But in the grand scheme of things, that's a win for us. We got to see what we could work on as far as week to week, seeing where holes are, and just – where the good things were as well, to continue to grow from that. So but, let's talk about that game a little bit, yeah. because that is against a 6A playoff team, yeah. right? Yes, sir. A, a well-coached team. Obviously, yeah, Landrick does yeah. a great job yeah. over there. And so to get that out of the gate, week one, you test yourself against a 6A playoff team. Yeah. What did you come away with individually? After that game, what were some of your thoughts? Some of my thoughts individually have been just continuing to work hard, because I started off very hot, but it's kind of just like, being able to just like stay in the game mentally and not check out mentally when things did get rough. Like in that third quarter, it would have been very easy to get rough, hard on myself, not doing too well. I was able to just stay cool mentally, just like Coach Flake says, just stay calm, cool, collected, cool for enthusiasm, and just can you stay mentally in, just work hard. Just keep speaking doing like speaking of Coach Flakes, yeah. what, are some, some, what are some of the things he talked about yeah. on Monday after that game? What are some of the things he thought went well? What are some of the things that said, hey, we got to clean these up? So overall... We stuck well to our game plan of being able to just run the ball, get that established, and kind of try to work the pass game off it, get that flowing. So we're kind of happy, happy with how that went. But a big hole we could probably work on was overall was probably our push as far as just physicality, which is something that we addressed this week at practice. I think we'll be good to go as far as the rest of the season plays out. I mean, the other good thing about that week, too, is, you know, there's a good chance – you're not going to face a team, a yeah. lot of teams that big, right? Mm -hmm. The good thing about facing 6A opponents early is when you guys get into the heart of your district, yeah. you're not going to face that many guys that mm -hmm. big. And, not, yeah. and West Mesa is a, is a pretty big-sized yeah, team, especially team. in the lines, right? So t talk about how that gets you ready for district. Honestly, yeah, because we're talking about all week. West Mesa was a great, well, physically coached team, very physical. They're not what they're doing, you could tell. And so overall, just continue to learn from that game as far as just knowing that, like, that may not be the – probably will be the best one of the best teams we play this year. So just learn from that. Take that loss on the chin. Just continue going and growing. Now, you got Moriarty coming up this yeah. week. Um, that's a team that's uh, – that's yes. a hard team to prepare for because they're – they play a certain style. They've played that way forever. It's different playing it – you know, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but when a yeah. team runs a certain offense, that's that's got to be a little different to prepare for, right? Yeah. But honestly, I think going inside we'll have a great game plan, great week of practice. Get ready for that and just be ready for whatever they come with. Be ready to respond and play our game as well. All right. You've watched the show before, right? So you know we do a top five list. Yes. All right. So we, got, we like to do a top five list of top five things that we don't know about you. So okay. I hope you're prepared. Top five things we don't know about Herschel Holloway Jr. Number five. One thing I have to start off with is coaching. I honestly feel like I'm a great young coach. Coach Flakes has a younger son, Camden. So over the summer, me and Curtis – as well as our teammate Chase Nelson. We coached up his flag team. There you go. So, so I had some fun with that. Starting yeah. a little flag yaffle yep. dynasty. Yes, sir. 
So you're telling me I, if I go out to wherever, Mesa del Sol or whatever, yeah. I could see the Pious Boys coaching them up? Just wait. In a few years, right. you'll see our Yaffle team I need some championships, man. Yeah. That, and I think that helps you as a player too, right? Yes. When you understand the coaching aspect? Yes. The preparation it takes going into it. There's some nights I was thinking, what is the game plan for this week? What are we going to do? What play am I going to call the scenario? So just, yeah. Right. I, okay. Fun. Number four of things we don't know about you. I'll start off with multi-sport athlete. A lot of people I don't think know that I do play a lot of sports, which some I think is very important because those do, other sports do help me very much for football itself. Well, so I'm going to go. guess one is track, just because yes. <laughs> based on your yes. speed. Yeah. Okay. And then what's the other one? Basketball. Okay. All Basketball. right. So um, there might be a, a renaissance of young talent yes, sir. at St. Saint, right, Saint Pius coming up for the basketball team. Yes, then? sir. All right. That'll I'm be at, yeah. something to keep an eye on for sure. Any other sports when you were young? I grew up playing baseball a lot. Okay. And that's center right. fielder. Okay. Yeah, I fun with that. All right. Number three, uh, top five things we don't know about you. Probably... Something I get clowned on for school a lot is some I don't like tomatoes at all. Anything tomatoes, I do not care for. So not even, even ketchup. It would have to. It depends on the day. Okay. Depends on the day. So like, what you you do fries without ketchup? Ranch. That's what I eat. Okay. Okay. All okay right. Ranch. Okay. So it's a good substitution, all I right. think. Have you always not liked tomatoes? Yes, because even like some spaghettis I won't even eat. Okay. So what is like, it about tomatoes? You think? Just don't like I the just, taste. Don't like the just, texture, all of it? What? I think it might just be the texture I don't like. Okay. Just growing right, up and right. never like that. Okay. All right. So so you're probably not big on Italian food then? I like f- fettuccine. That's what okay, we like. Okay, Alfredo. That's you're my, Alfredo. That's my go-to right. right there. Pre-game. What about, what about pizza then? Do you do the pizza with the white sauce? Yes. That's gross. Yes. You that, don't like that? That's a no. disgrace and an affront to pizza. Right? <laughs> pizza has to have tomato, on, tomato sauce on it. That's gross. <laughs> what if you're in a team setting? Like that means some poor teammate has to eat that white sauce pizza because you ordered it, right? No, I'll, in that scenario, I'll, I will eat the pizza. Or getting you whole pizza yourself? In that scenario, I will eat the okay. normal. Right, I will well, eat the that's normal. That's a good teammate there. then. All right, where, what number are we at? Number two? Two. two. All right, what, second thing, number, number two, what don't we know about you? A lot of people say this, but I'm not sure if it's true or not, but they say I'm the second most athletic person in my household to my sister. Oh, okay. So I'm not really... Y'all gonna have to stay tuned for that to see. So what does your sister play? What sports does she play? She plays softball, volleyball, and basketball. Okay. She's a multi-sport athlete. So she, uh, when you guys hoop in the parking lot, in the garage, and the who's, yeah. who's pretty competitive games. One thing is she's not scoring. Okay. I will not let her score. Lock her up. Nope, she's not scoring. All right. Okay, all right. And then the number one thing we don't know about you. A lot of people don't know this is that Coach Fakes is actually my uncle. Okay. So and then yeah. So does that ever get tough? <laughs> like, at, at times it has. At times it has, yeah. But I know that deep down he knows what's best for me. And he has my best interest at heart. Because he's some... pretty intense. Like, yes. I thought he might. I thought he was going to lose it on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. Because there certainly was not holding being called on one side of the field, yeah. right? So I thought he was going to flip his lid. Um, so he's pretty intense. Does he ever, yeah. uh, you know, does that ever get like, you're like, hey, calm down, uncle, or would that, that wouldn't fly, yeah, right? It's funny is that actually is my, my dad's job been a lot of the time. So he's always usually been that get back coach okay. of, hey, come on, coach, Fla- hey, come on, coach, Fla- we good, bro, we good. Right. And so that's normally his bit, that's been his job to hold him back. Okay, well, he's not done his job a couple of times. Because <laughs> <laughs> coach is intense. Yeah, yeah. For sure. All right, I want to take another break, talk, uh, talk to Herschel a little bit more about the rest of the season and some things he enjoys away from the football field. We'll be right back. Turbo Threads is a proud sponsor of ProView Networks. Almost 30 years of experience means fast service, great prices, and a wide selection of apparel from T-shirts to performance sports shirts, even jackets and hats. They feature low minimums and no setup charges on most orders. Turbo Threads is located at 1503 Golf Course Road in Rio Rancho, or find them on Facebook, online at TurboThreads.com, or call 999-1234 for Turbo Threads. For your business or your home, Valley Fence stands alone. We're number one in New Mexico for a reason. It's the best fence you can own. Proudly serving New Mexico for over 50 years. At Valley Fence, the difference is clear. No fence too big, too small, or difficult. We handle them all at Valley Fence Company. High school sports are back. You can watch every ProView Network broadcast online on the NFHS Network. Every moment from every game from every sport, including all NMAA state championship games. Get your monthly pass now 
Just go to ProViewNetworks.com, click on the NFHS logo, and sign up today. Watch New Mexico's best. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walk to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Networks. I was born in New Mexico. I grew up on these streets. I got in trouble here, and I fought my way back in boot camp. I love New Mexico, especially the people. Now I'm using my training, tenacity, and energy to fight for you. I'm Adam Oki, lawyer, fighter, and New Mexican. I was a local athlete here in New Mexico, so I'm proud to support your local athletes. Welcome back. Uh, we're with Herschel Allaway Jr., the running back at St. Pius. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to go out and watch Pius play there, one of the more exciting offenses in the city to watch play. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, I guess Portales would be the team to beat, right, in your classification? Yes, as of right now, yeah. So talk about that. I mean, obviously, Portales getting a lot of attention. Who else Who else are some of the teams that are people are talking about there in, in 4A? We've heard of... Oh, from what I've seen, Bloomfield, he played last year. Right. Great well, great team, well coached, very disciplined. It's a great team right there that we'd like to see again. As for Bernalillo, too. It's another, we have scrimmage with them. Nice young team, right. physical, great team, well coached. Yeah. So who, would be the, who would be the rivals? And what's, the, what's the rivalry? Being at St. Pius, the easy answer is Academy. Okay. Academy. So, um, so that even on the football field, that's the rivalry? Yes, sir. Because I know that gets intense in soccer. Yeah. Really intense in soccer. That's what we inherited at coming to St. Pius, that academy rivalry. Right. Yeah. That rivalry has a, a pretty rich history. <laughs> yeah. A pretty weird history. Yeah. Google some uh, newspaper articles, too. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, talk about that game. I mean, how, how, what's different that week? Because, yeah, that's real. That rivalry is real. So what, what, what's extra that week? One of, that's one of those games to where all week you're hearing academy, academy game. All the teachers, academy game. We got the academy, academy game. So it's cool to just... Play against those guys, compete with them, and just yeah, compete with those guys. Play. Them. I mean, you guys are kind of a team on the rise. They're a team yeah. that's kind of lost a little bit. I think it's fair to say they graduated a yeah. lot of players, right? So, going into that game on paper, maybe you guys have the advantage yeah. this year, right? But you got to play the game. Rivalries gotta, are gotta real, go right? Yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah, got to go out there. As always, just like Coach Faker says, it's always us versus us. No matter what they do, as long as we do what we do, I feel like we have a great shot of winning any game. Versus anyone, as long as we do what we do, stick to the game plan, and just, yeah. Pius obviously has a very rich football tradition, right? I mean, I can remember some of the Drew Ortiz teams that I got to broadcast. Yeah. Um, coach Mendoza, who was an old coach there, broadcast some games with me. He's won multiple state titles. How special would it be to kind of return St. Pius into that conversation? It would be very special because a lot of them are saying, like, oh, say, when are we going to get our ring? Because you see soccer. Boys soccer got theirs. Girls soccer almost got theirs too. Volleyball got got theirs, so it's kind of like, our it's our turn next. Got to get right. ours. Yeah. Um, baseball team has been Base, highly yes. successful there, yeah, right? Baseball too, yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, but obviously the building blocks are one day at a time, right? Yeah. You talked about getting a little bit better every day. Yes, sir. What are you doing individually, and what's the team doing to get better every day? First, let's start with you individually. Individually, I say just continue stay in that weight room. Right. Just continue to try to like strengthen up. And just so get, for you yeah. guys, it's a lot of weight room stuff, right? Yes, we've been in the weight room a thing. lot, okay. yeah. What, I mean, what, what about, I mean, take me inside the, the, the program a little bit. What Has there been any, what are the expectations of, of a young team like this? Does Coach Flakes keep it simple and just say, hey, let's get better? Yeah. Or does he have some goals that are, that if you don't mind sharing them, like, hey, we yeah. want to win this, we want to win this. What are those expectations in the program I mean, there's right some now? riding on the wall is like, let's win this, let's do this, let's try to like, win district, get to state, and mm -hmm. just get hot state, win state. But it's always just continue to get better. Just continue to control what we can control, which is ourselves, and how we carry ourselves and what we do. So that's kind of just the focus of our program, right? our culture. Yeah. All right, let's step away from the program a little bit. What does yeah. Herschel Allaway Jr. do to just unwind? Honestly, I'll probably sleep or play NCAA, play okay. the video game with friends, just have fun with them. and just. All right, so you're a yeah. gamer. 
Yes. All right. What are some of your go-tos? You said NCAA. Play. Any others? A lot of Warzone. We play as a squad. Okay. Was, yeah. And now I hear that, that that's big in the city. Yeah. Like a lot of teams have a lot of guys that do that, right? Yeah. Like do you, so you guys play, you guys play against other teams. Like who are some of the who are who, who are some of the guys in town that are really good at, at Call of Duty? I don't really know as much as Call of Duty, but one guy I do play in Madden that was good was you know Elijah Brody. Yeah. I used to play him in Madden a lot. Okay. So he's one of those guys that was very good at Madden. Right. Who else? Like if you were, if you were to uh, if you were to say they create an All Star Madden team, who who are some of the best Madden players in the city? I gotta go with uh, Elijah for sure. I gotta go with myself, okay. of course. And then what team are you playing as? I gotta go with Bills. Buffalo Bills. Okay, why the Bills? That's an interesting one. That's my favorite team, actually. Okay. A lot of people, right, yeah, it's my right. favorite team. And then just... Who else is good at... at um... Surprisingly not... Kale. Kale's good. Okay, all right. What team does he are... play? Who oh, Kale? Probably go with, like, the 49ers or someone. Okay, He'll go all with right, all the right. Seahawks. As he likes. Have you ever... Um, uh, you, ever got, you guys ever played for money? We have. Ah, now, but, now we're getting into yes. the good stuff, right? Me, so you're good enough to win some money yes. from your teammates. Or well, if you see Christian Morales, that dude still owes me my hundred dollars. Oh, you got to play for the big <laughs> bucks. Like I don't even think like Jason and I we play, but we're like yeah. we're in the penny games, right? We're in the small stuff. Man, you, he owes you a bill, huh? That's something I'm never gonna get though. Well, that dude, have, that dude ain't gonna pay me. I might have yeah. to mention that on a broadcast I got to. if you don't mind. Yeah. I'll mention yes. it. All right. That, so, um, um, and the so Madden. Call it, what are some others? Any other? Those are kind of the big ones, right? Yeah, those are just the main ones we play just when we get some time, not no schoolwork, don't got to do. Just now, do you ever swing around to the eSports guys and be like, what is this all about? Check out what they're doing? Because eSports, oh. is, it's a thing now, right? And yeah, a, And APS and, on, and the Anime A has an eSports yeah. thing. And I see, like, some of those schools have a pretty fancy setup yeah. with the chairs and yep. the room. Like, you yeah, ever swing by that room at I, ha- I haven't yet. Okay. No, some I might well, check that out, right? I might got to, all yeah. Right, all right. What, um... Getting back onto the field briefly, right? Yeah. Um, what's what's next for you? I mean, obviously, you know, you're very young right now. So yeah. what what what's next? What do you have to keep doing to play at the next level? Do you want to play at the next level? Yes, that is something tell, I do want to do. I want to play at the next level. But as far as just what's very important to me as well is my academics, of course. Because no matter what happens, no matter no matter what happens, like with football or without it, as long as I know I got my academics straight, just continue to grow as a student, as a person. That's something I know will always be there for me. Last, lastly, you guys, I'm sure you have that chip on your shoulder of the little guy, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Because you guys are the little some, brother. You guys yeah. are small, right? Yeah. And so, but there's guys that have come out of the state. I mean, Jordan Bird's the first that comes to yeah. mind, right? He's still playing right now professionally up in Canada. He's actually on our coaching staff for a little while. I know. He so was, he got called. I know. Go do his thing out there. I know, yeah. dude. You and I both. He was <laughs> yeah. going to be with me yeah. for the my fifty game. He was going to be with yeah. you and coach, and now he's doing his thing, right? So yeah. Is that a real thing? Is the chip on your shoulder, the little guy syndrome? It's real, right? It motivates yes. you, doesn't it's it? Some of that we hear, we talking about the state of, oh, St. Pius is just, they're that young team. They're the undersized team. They're the young team. But it's something that we always think of like, hey, if they can win, so can we. And so just always just continue to work hard, head down, one step at a time, just continue to grow, get better. Well, I think the cat's definitely out of the bag. Uh, thank you for joining us yeah. on the season premiere of Local Focus. It's a pleasure to watch. Thank you. Good luck, a healthy rest of the way, and thank you everybody for watching, and good night. Thank you.